We built a pair of smart glasses that are fully functional, fully open source, and support a ton of apps like live language translation, super memory tools, AI smart assistant, the list goes on. We're gonna talk about how they work, what they can do, and how they were made by a team of crazy hackers around the world. Now this is not your everyday project video because I drove around North America in a mobile hacker lab while making these glasses, going on adventures, meeting sick people, and I'm gonna bring you along for the ride. Let's go. Canada! These are version 1.0 of the open source smart glasses. These bad boys have a display, microphones, microcontroller, and batteries. If we look through the display, we can see support for language translation, a contextual search engine. My friend has a Pomeranian dog. Live captions. We're running the live life captions on the open source smart glasses and more. In my previous video, we got to the point of having audio glasses. And in this video, we're gonna show how we went from those audio glasses to a fully working pair of smart glasses with integrated display. If you like smart glasses, neurotech, AI, human computer interaction, subscribe to my channel. So many of the applications and use cases that we were interested in needed a display in order to operate. Alex Israelov joined Team Open Smart Glasses and he brought with him a bunch of knowledge about how we could integrate a low cost solution display. Near the end of summer 2022, we began the mission of integrating a display into the open source smart glasses two major changes were needed. First, we needed to design a new circuit board which would support the display output. We also needed to be able to add firmware that would support this. I set out to continue my journey across North America in my mobile hacker lab by continuing on to Boston. On the way, I thought I'd stop at my parents' house because I figured they'd be happy to see me. Oh, hey dad, I'm here to visit. Hey son, park here? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Bucks. What do you mean? I, I'm just here to visit the family because I love you. After my mom convinced my dad to let me stay, we went out for a quick rip. I then set out on the road and drove to Boston. I spent the fall there working on the glasses. We added a bunch of electronics and microphones that we were lacking on the previous iteration. A RAM chip so that we have more memory, which is required now that we're adding a display. This board here has a breakout for a display. It's going to be a prism that lays over the eye. While in Boston, I visited the MIT Media Lab, enjoyed some nature, and explored the city. I even met another sick van lifer, and we threw a little dance party. Eventually, Boston got too cold. On my way south, I met up with Madhav from Transcribe Glass. Hayden is trying out Transcribe Glass at you. Very nice. I just kept driving south until it got warm, and that happened to be in Charleston, South Carolina. The boards were finished by then, and so I ordered them. For version 0.5 of the board. Just about to solder. Now this is laid down. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, man. Pretty perfect. Look at how nice that is. Open source smart glasses board running off two batteries. Display. This is the driver board which receives an analog NTSC input right there. My name is Alex from the Open Source Smart Glasses development team. The Open Source Smart Glasses uses a Sony 336C micro display in order to present a variety of information directly to the user's eye at a resolution of 640 by 400. A display from an OLED through this prism. We had a new fully working electrical harness, but we needed to completely redesign the mechanical in order to accommodate our new battery size, new board shape, and especially the new display driver and display prism. There's a tight curve. If I slap these on, you can see the batteries almost completely disappear. We need a way to figure out how to get a lot of weight put onto the ears and not the nose, and we need a lot of bulk that we can hide, and behind the ears is the way to go. I forgot to mention that earlier in the summer before I left Toronto, I went to see my friend Jeremy Stairs, who showed us the neuromeditation brain-computer interface technology he's building at Divergence Neuro. The Big. <laughs> yeah, first name The Big, second name Zuck. Last name Zuck. <laughs> <laughs> This is me controlling my alpha waves in the back of my head. What I can do to modulate my alpha activity, either attend to the world around me, which will lower the alpha, or I can imagine empty space and stop attending 
the people that are around me, and then the alpha will go up by defocusing. And I'm going to focus now. All right, and that's yeah. the that's, that's the, that's the stuff. Matt Jansen joined Team Open Smart Glasses. And then him and I collaborated in Fusion 360 to bring the frames to the design that you see today. We needed to print them off and iterate, but unfortunately, my SLA printer had broken at some point on the road. Reforge in Charleston. When my SLA printer died, I emailed every single person in Charleston who might have access to an SLA printer. And these guys got back and said, yep, I just printed off a pair of glasses. Another pair. This is a huge day. This is the first assembly of version 1.0. As you can see, there's a display. Right now it's running live life captions. None of this would have been possible without the help of Team Open Smart Glasses. I'd like to thank Alex Israelov, Paul Hamilton, Adrian Papano, and Matt Jansen. It's four hours into 2023, and I just got kicked out of my spot in the Target parking lot. I'm just trying to enjoy my New Year's Day in the mall parking lot, as one does, and some security guard pulls up here. You gotta go to Red Lobster, cause you can't stay here, but don't worry, buddy. Red Lobster, and I parked in the back, it's because there's trees over there, but there's none over there, so that when the sun comes up in the morning, the sun's coming from the east. <laughs> And it's gonna give me power on my solar panels. We had a fully functional pair of open source smart glasses. We released the 1.0 beta version, and then we flew to Las Vegas to CES to show them off. My flight to CES is in about 24 hours, and I am assembling the version 1.0 of the open source smart glasses. I also flew to CES in Las Vegas to meet up with Caden there. About to get on a plane to Vegas to hit CES. I'm out here with Jeremiah, yep. who I met on the plane, yep. who offered to give me a ride to the hotel. Welcome to the lab, I mean the hotel room. <laughs> Alex is currently assembling, putting a little bit of stuff together here. Got the... I'm almost in the mainframe. Er <laughs> Why did you bring that <laughs> to the hotel? We have three pairs of glasses. Hacker man. You should check out my other video where I show the 23 best smart glasses technologies of CES 2023. Time for bed. <sighs> Good night. <laughs> But I skipped one thing. How do the apps even run? Team Open Smart Glasses has an open source software project, the Wearable Intelligence System, that can connect to a whole bunch of different pairs of smart glasses, and it runs apps that run on any of them. Live language translation, captions, memory tools, visual search, AI assistance, web search, Wolfram Alpha, you name it, all run in the Wearable Intelligence System. We're actually currently working on the next generation of the Wearable Intelligence System, which is going to serve as a smart glasses manager which is going to allow anybody to write smart glasses apps incredibly quickly and allow them to write one app that runs on any pair of commercially available smart glasses or the open source smart glasses. If you're into smart glasses, you should check out the H2O smart glasses community. It's a group of like-minded people who create an open and inclusive ecosystem for us to come together and talk about smart glasses technology and use cases. Speaking of which, subscribe to this channel. For those of you who've been following my mobile hacker lab journey across North America, it is approaching one in the morning, the last night in the mobile hacker lab. And I'm selling it. Hacker Adventures, Toronto, Vancouver, Washington State, Illinois, Boston, Charleston. It was absolutely insane. But now I'm moving on to somewhere new. There's gonna be a new lab. And it's gonna be sick. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Stay tuned for more, and I'll see you next time. Cut!